Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. What is God's focus upon the life of the male man? Why is this meeting peculiar? Why will God have us come to speak eye to eye as men, as leaders, as people that God is looking at for a deliberate walk in this generation and in our land at this time. I would like to trust God that the Holy Spirit will be bringing clarity onto our role as men and as people that God is longing to hand over the authority of leadership into our hands at various levels and in various ways. I would like us to please turn our Bibles very critical about the man. If our wives were here tonight, it's okay. We would have been saying something else to them. But because we are men, we need to address ourselves. Why am I a man? And what is crucial about me? And why is God focusing on me as a man? Why can't my, our wives, let them go anywhere they like to go, let them go everywhere. Why will God not be satisfied to grab the women? Why is it not enough? If we just release our wives and let them be running up and down, why is God unable to run with the women? Why is God concentrating on us as men? This little story was bringing a very quiet revelation, which, as we study it briefly now, it will place before you the critical need for you to arise as a man. I noticed that the king of Egypt said, as he saw the people multiplying, he called the midwives. And he said to the midwives, please, you will do me a favor. I will double your salary if you do so. And the midwife said, yes, sir, what do you want us to do? He said, when you do the office of a midwife, to the Hebrew women, whenever they come to the point of delivery, if it is a son, what do you do? Eh? Kill him. But if it's a daughter, do what? Eh? Right. Why did he say like that? Without demeaning the woman, without a sense of ingratitude to our wives and our mothers, I would like to say to you that as far as the king of Egypt can see, and as far as the prince of darkness have understood 
And as far as even the kingdom of God is concerned, women are great and they are indispensable and we don't know what will happen to the world if women were not there. We thank God for women. But there's something that we cannot exchange about a man. The king of Egypt did not, was not afraid if women multiply. You know what he understood? He knew that a woman is absorbable. What did I say he knew? That women are what? Absorbable. That you can easily absorb women and they will not become any problem to you. He seemed to know that women, even though they carry the womb, they are the ones that can be pregnant. But back at the mind of the king of Egypt, he understood a very important matter that yes, women can be plenty, they can have plenty womb and big womb, but it will be an empty womb until a man put the seed there. He recognized that what actually determines growth in any community, whatever we, what, what determines increase and multiplication does not depend on the woman. It depends majorly on the man. How many of you know that scientifically when you go and ask doctors and they were going to explain to you that for many, many, many cases of barrenness, there, were, there were going to be few barrenness that depends on the woman. Many, 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 many cases of barrenness is not the inability of the woman, is the man. When you see your wife delivering only girls, sometimes you are saying, why is she only giving me girls? That is because you did not understand the science of how the sex of a child is determined. That actually the woman, the wife, has nothing to do about whether a child is a boy or a girl. Who determines whether a, a child will be a boy or a girl? It's you. It's you. If your wife has given you four girls, and you are wondering and say, Kai, Kai. Stop shaking your head. The matter does not lie in that woman. The matter lies more directly, directly with the man. So when we said, what is crucial about the man? I would like all of you to look very deliberately with me tonight. I want you to know that whereas we may not be able to have a child without a woman. But what that child is, is determined by the man. Every one of you sitting here, every one of you sitting here, do you know, if nobody has told you before, can I tell you again, that each one of you, you are a progenitor. If nothing stops and if you continue to multiply, you alone can form a city. Oh my God. Don't you believe what I'm talking about? As you are sitting here, you are a clan head. With due regard to our royal fathers, 
I would like you to remember that every clan begins with one man. Are we together? Are we together? When I try to find out what is the history of my hometown, and for so many of our cities, it begins with one man. One man that is productive, we make a whole city, we make a whole tribe. When you go and check what is the history of the thief people, it begins with one man called Mr. Thief. And when you go ahead and you go to the, the, the you want to trace the history of the Yoruba people, it begins with one man. And as you go from one place to another, it is the male man that has the capacity. So when the, when the king of Egypt said, any one of them that is a boy, do what? Kill him. Kill him. That's the only way in which we will overrun them. But if it's a girl, leave the girl. The girl is not a threat to us. The girl is not a problem because we can absorb her. I know many of you, you have heard in our local proverbs. What do they say? They say women have no religion. You are not hearing me at all. Did they say that? Have you heard that before? What do they mean? They mean that no matter how zealous a woman is, no matter how you know, energetic she appears in terms of religion and going up and down. Wise people say, look, don't worry. The whole thing will soon end in her husband. So they realize even the devil does not, is not threatened. He knows that you can have all the women up and down until you get the man. You have not got something much. And so I realized that every time the devil tempts a woman, he only tempts a woman as a stepping stone to catch the man. You are not with me again. Whenever you see the devil tempting a woman, it is not the woman that the devil is looking for. Who is he looking for? He's looking for the downfall of the man. You may see women being confused and deceived to dress almost half naked and all of this. And to you, you may say, oh, why are they doing like that? Can I tell you why are they doing like that? They are looking for you. Actually, if you are not around, they will dress normally. Are you hearing me? Somehow I have come to discover that the purpose of God the direction, the shape of the will of God is bound up in the male man. And the woman was created only to help him. Only to help him achieve what he was meant to achieve. So when the enemy wants to destroy the purpose of God on the face of the earth, he goes for the man. He goes for the man. 
if there is going to be any calamity that is going to take the purpose of God out of shape that calamity will not go far if it's only located in the woman but when it gets to the man it's like the head of the whole matter is shattered why does God want to form the man apart from all the other issues that the Holy Spirit will be helping us to deal with as we come I want you to know that because headship leadership was reserved for man You all know that if there's an accident and you break your leg, except the devil just want to be very, very wicked, you can survive. Am I right? But if there's an accident and you have an head injury, the chance of coming out of that accident is very very small am i right because a head injury finishes everything else and there are times that even if you don't die you may never actually recover your balance there are people now that there are no more balance because when they had that accident something happened to their head and everything is out of shape so if the devil is able to capture the head to shave and shake away the man and make him complacent or unable to stand in his place he will have put his hand on the divine purpose of God and that will have been the end of it and so tonight what is crucial about you sitting here what's crucial about you apart from the fact that you are going to start families you are going to increase and populate the earth the identity of every child i don't know them there may be some few nations but there are very few nations that name their children after the mother. Do you know anywhere where when a child is born, the son's name is the mother's name? Eh? I don't think you know any. That when this child was born, they said Jacob Cecilia. <laughs> It looks very odd. The reason is because the responsibility of, of the man to put identity on every child that comes through his loins cannot be shared. You are the one that determines the identity of your children. You are the one that gives shape and direction and focus to everything that comes through you. Apart from you, nothing will have identity. So if the enemy succeeds in producing men that are weak and are weaklings, whose identities are not clear whose direction are not straightforward you can understand what is going to happen in so many 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 of our community I have met different people and I found that 
for a man that has not experienced the fatherly hand to give him direction in life many many times such fellows are restless because they don't know where they truly belong they don't know where they truly belong whereas you could have question people could ask question i don't know my father i don't know my father I've never met people who say I don't know my mother. And you're not hearing me. Have you met somebody who say, I don't even know whether it's a woman who bombed me? Eh? That's not the question. That's not what the devil is fighting. The devil never fights a motherless baby. What is critical for the devil is to make sure that the father figure is not present. That's what he is working at. And so, tonight, tonight, why is God gathering us together as men? It's because there is something about you that both heaven and hell are concerned about. There is something about you that will determine the direction of the purpose of God in our generation. And I would like to pray with you tonight that that thing that is peculiar why you were born a man will not fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That thing that is critical in the heart of God, why he, he made you to come out as a male, not as a woman, not as a female from your mother's womb, It's a responsibility that heaven must help us to accomplish in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know that the responsibility of passing on the, the blessing, of passing on the family covenant, the responsibility of bringing about the covenant blessing from one generation to another generation has been vested in you as a man. As I read through the whole scriptures, I found that there were great women like Deborah, great women like Sarah, who, if they should actually bless people, they should be blessed because they were women who walk with God. But as I read again and again from the word of God, I found that every time a generational blessing is to be placed, God waits for the man to do it. It is because it is you that have the responsibility of passing on the blessing, the covenant that will cause the purpose of God from your generation to pass to the next generation. Outside you, it will be lost. So when the king of Egypt said, any one of them that is a boy, kill him. And this was not the only time you go through scriptures and you find that the devil is very incensed against men. Against men. In the time of Jesus, you remember Herod. What was the Herod's instruction as well said? 
any child that has been born from two years downward, if it's a man, kill him. If it's a girl, leave him alone. We don't have problem with girls. We will use them. We will absorb them. They are not a threat to us. We can always give them a different identity altogether. Thank God that God is raising women now who are strong in bringing support to husbands and to their, to their men. But I would still like to say that it is not in them to give shape. They can give help, they can give support, but the man that God has made is the one that carries the direction. Brothers, I would like to now ask you to join me in raising a critical prayer point. And as I raise that prayer point, I want to raise it very soberly because we are going to be having to pray. We are going to be saying to God, as a man, am I fulfilling my role? As a man, have I been caught short? As a man, am I less than what I'm supposed to be in your divine purpose? As a man, am I bringing correct things unto all that must pass through my hand? If a man is correct, we cannot tell how many, 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 many lives would have been blessed by his life. But when a man is not in his rightful place, we cannot also predict how much damage goes down the line. It only took a Gehazi to misbehave and the whole of his lineage they became leprous. It was a challenge that Miriam became leprous but there was no problem. Are we together? Miriam misbehaved and she became a leper and actually died. Nobody actually died with her. But when Gehazi caught leprosy from Mr. Nehemiah, the word of God says, and this leprosy that has come on you will come on you and all your children. That's the matter with me. It was interesting that Jezebel was a very, very terrible woman. She was the one that pushed Ahab. But when Ahab finally fell, do you notice that the curse that came on Ahab was a generational curse that passed through all his lineage? When a woman falls, the damage is limited. When a man falls, the damage is colossal. Are you hearing me tonight? Are you hearing me tonight? When a woman makes mistakes, it can be contained. But when a man crash lands, it's almost irretrievable. When a woman succeeds, her success, again, also is limited. It can be contained. But when a man strikes it well and gets to the place of success, 
it also has a ripple effect on all that comes through him hallelujah hallelujah i know what it means i know what it means if you happen to have a good name as a man do you know that everywhere you go your children all those who bear that name even when they themselves are not particularly brilliant on their own people are just generally willing to do what to help them out that's why in our political days there are some people that they are enjoying the benefit in politics not because they themselves have any any political power but they are walking in the shadow of who of their fathers that have a name and do you know that whenever politicians want to gather and do something they will now go to J.S. Tucker grave and they will be doing something around it and if anybody happen to have any name that that has to attach to Taka in any way it's like a ticket so everybody will come and say you know you see it's a distant relative and uh, this and all of that and all of that and all of that and you wonder why but I hope you know that there are so many people that may have descended from that family but who have been married to another place and they have changed their name long ago does it carry the same weight eh no so the other time i was looking at one of the daughters of our old politician though got married she refused to to carry the name of her husband she needed a compound name you know why you don't know why i know you know so let me not go there now what i'm trying to say is this the responsibility of being a man is enormous not just for your time but for the days ahead for the generation that will come behind you there's so much so the question that i'm putting to you tonight as we stop here to pray is as a man am i formed to fulfill what i was born a man to accomplish Am I stepping into the divine purpose why I came out as a man? Am I aware of what is dependent on what my life becomes? Am I contributing my quota to my generation for being born a man? As Pharaoh issued a decree and said, Kill him, cut him short, don't let him get to where he ought to get to. Have I fallen a victim? Am I less than what I'm supposed to be? Am I unable to occupy my position in the purpose of God? During these few days, oh God, I want you to sort that out with me. I want to rise from these few days of meeting. I want to return as the man I am born to be and born again to be in the kingdom of God. And it is from here that we will now take our bearing of prayer the bible says 
The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 that is our theme text it said and the Lord took the man whom he had formed and he put him in a garden. You will remember that it was later that God said oh it's not good for the man to be alone I will make for him a help that is made for him. We'll be dealing with that. But tonight, as we get on to stop before God in prayer, what is it that is militating against you being the man that God wants you to be? What is it that is reducing your effectiveness as the man, the head of your family? What is it that weakens you where you are supposed to be the leader, where you are supposed to provide the shape, the direction, something seems to weaken you and you are sitting back there and say, well, let them go on. Is there something that is wrestling with you internally that will not allow you to break forth into what God ordained you to be? I did say that Whereas the woman Eve was deceived by the devil to eat the, 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 the fruit of the tree that God said they should not eat. I reasoned as I read the Bible that even that would not have been a matter. It would not have disturbed anything. It could have been absorbed. It could have been contained. And the devil would not have achieved much. But you see, the devil was not aiming at the woman. The devil aimed at the man. And it was when the man, when the man took up the tree, through the allurement of his wife, of course, that the whole matter became a matter. And you know, God came and said to the woman, I mean to the man, he said, because you have acted unto the voice of your wife, because you have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, because of you, the ground is cursed for your sake. And in sorrow. So I was imagining when God was talking to the woman about the mistake she has made, you see, it was contained. God simply said unto the woman, he said, I will multiply your sorrow and your conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children, your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. Full stop. The mistake of the woman was limited to her. But for the man, he said, because of what you have done, the ground is caused for your sake. Every time a man fails, he does not fail alone. The whole ground that he occupies comes in trouble. Every time a man fails, he does not fail alone. The whole family under his hand is in trouble. Every time a man fails, he does not fail alone. Everything that is connected with him is caused because of him. It bothers me tonight to ask you, have you brought some untold difficulty on those children that are under your hand because something is wrong with you? Have you brought difficulty to those under your hand simply because you miss your step with God? Do you know, as we will be reading, that even in the place of prayer, we 
women can pray a lot. But every time God comes down, he wants to answer prayer. He's looking for where is the head of this woman? Where is the man to come and stand and say, yes, I am the, I am the, I am the husband and I am the head of this woman and I am asking you, Father, to do it. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the man is not there because something has cut him short. So Satan is saying, kill him, kill him. Don't allow him to see the light of day. Don't allow him to be what he ought to be. Weaken him and put him out of the place. As we pray tonight, is there any secret sin that is going on in your life? I would not have been worried if it is limited to you. It will not have been a matter if the effect is only you. But what you don't know is this. When you break your walk with God, when sin finds a space in your life, it's not only you that is brought under the jeopardy. Everything under you. God said to Adam, cost is the grand because of you. The whole grant is going to be barren because of you. Thorns and thistles will be the encumbering matter on the grant just because of you. You are not going anywhere. It was only Cain that made a mistake. Do you remember? But when God came down, and began to speak to Cain. He said, Cain, because of this thing that you have done, all your generation, up to the seventh generation, shall be cast out. Brothers, brothers, are we together tonight? What is crucial about you is because you are not alone. Every one of you sitting before me here, I see a nation. I don't just see a man, I see a whole nation. When the children were struggling in the womb of, uh, of, of Rebecca, and God was telling Rebecca, two nations are inside you. Two nations. Two nations are inside you. When you see a boy, what are you seeing? Excuse me, what are you seeing? You are seeing a nation. You are seeing a nation. Each one of you, there is capacity. You are not alone. You may think you are alone. You are not alone. You may say, but what am I? You are somebody. You are a nation. For anything to be wrong with you, if it is not corrected, something is wrong with a whole lineage. And that's why I'm, I beg you tonight. Is there something that is battling with your inner man? Is there something that is killing you, killing you inside? Is there a secret sin that is cutting your life short? If it were for you alone, I would have said, okay. But because the things you are putting your hand in now, you are actually mortgaging a whole lineage. But do you know that if a man is correct, if a man is right, the blessedness of that man is not for him alone. The blessedness of that man is for the whole line that comes behind him. 
I wish to ask you tonight as a man, as a man, if I call you to repentance tonight, if you should rush out and say, Lord, correct my life, I want you to know that it is not only your life that God is correcting. God is correcting a whole lineage. God is dealing with a whole lineage. God is setting out a whole course. If the men of Nigeria will become correct men, nobody could predict how much blessing is going to come to our nation. But if our men become wayward, nobody also can tell how much damage in ripples, in ripples, is going to come to our land. I want to beg you tonight in the name of the Lord. Can you look inside? Can you look into your spirit? Can you look into your inner man? Can you ask a simple question? Am I jeopardizing my lineage? Am I less concerned about what comes out of me? Am I fulfilling the reason why I am a man? If Jesus Christ lay down his life for mankind, I would like to say he does so particularly even for a man. Don't think that I'm just trying to make you feel excited because you're a man. That is the truth. As I'm reading the Bible, I'm overwhelmed. God will be telling a man, he say, husband, love your wife. Even like Jesus Christ loves the church and gave himself for her that he may sanctify her. And I'm saying, ah, so the sanctification of a wife is actually dependent on the husband. So it looks as if God is not worried so much about a wife if she gets a correct husband. And I hope all of you know that even if your wife has been doing libe, 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 libe here, any day you stood up and said, we are going to church. What did your wife do? Eh? Talk to me, please. What did she do? She dressed up. She was going to follow you. And if you became a little more serious, you will see that whatever agenda she had, she was going to drop it and go with him. It's not the, the converse is not the same. Will I ask you, as you join me in prayer, is there anything that is cutting you short as a man? Is there anything that is reducing you inside? Is there anything that you are losing grip over? Apart from the fact that you have to be saved, may I say to you that the greater challenge is that what is going on in your life now is not limited to you. It's going over the whole line. Going over the whole line. May God help you not to have gone to mortgage your life because it will not only be you it will be the rest of all that belongs to you. Is there anything tonight that Jesus Christ is standing and saying, yes, I made you a man and I'm still committed to you. I still intend that you will be where I want you to be. I don't intend to replace you with a woman. I don't intend to make you just to tag along behind your wife. I want to make you the head that I intend you to be. I would like to form you and form you 
deliberately for my glory. This night, would you like to stand with me in prayer and honestly, very, very honestly, let's pray together and let's say to God, if I used to be ashamed of my wife, she's not here tonight. If I have not taken a decision because how can I cry before my wife? Your wife is not here tonight. If you have taken decisions that is beginning to have a negative effect on all that belongs to you, can you say to God tonight, honestly, Father, change my situation. If it to say that if any mistake is limited to you, it will not have been a matter. But that the Holy Spirit is saying, I made you a man because you are going to represent a line. You are going to raise men. Something is bound in your loins. And there is no gain say about it until you are formed, until you are changed, until your life turn around. Something is going to be wrong. Something is not going to work well. Please stand up with us as we call on God. And I'm asking you, how will you come and go away from this meeting? Still weak? Still maimed? I'm hearing the power of darkness say, kill him, don't let him make it. I want you to call on God tonight. If to say you are alone, I will have said, okay, it's limited. But the damage in the life of a man is the damage of his lineage, the damage of those that will come through him. Will you come to heaven to God and say, Father, that thing that weakens me, that thing that reduces me, that thing that breaks my relationship with you, Holy Ghost, deliver me tonight. Are you, have you lost control even in your family because you yourself, you are not standing where heaven ordained you to be? Is someone saying tonight, Lord Jesus, that issue in my life must be uprooted tonight. Is there a character that is reducing you from the man that God wants you to be? Would you like to say to God, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help my life tonight. Help my life tonight. Help my life tonight. Are you a husband in this meeting? Your wife may not know. Your wife may not understand where all the troubles have come. They just find that they are recipients of problems. They just discover that Things are perforated and they are wondering where is this coming from? They have been laboring up and down. They don't know that the ground has become dried simply because of you. Are we calling on God tonight and say, Father, Father, because of your loving kindness, Jesus, step into my case. Thank you tonight, Lord. Thank you. Spirit of God. Spirit of the living God. Will you go beyond where we can reach tonight? Will you change the story of your servants? 
Will you walk where no man could have walked? Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, the incense of Satan against your men, break it this night in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Bakaraba shando robos kunda raba basi, shembo robos kambaraba sahi karibash. Lord, listen, brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, listen, my friends. Listen, I know the Holy Spirit may be drawing somebody tonight. That you've got to make your life right. Have you entered? into a covenant with darkness and you have mortgaged your line difficulties are coming your wife is helpless imagine Achan 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 was the head of his family and he went and touched the the accursed thing when it was time for them to discipline, to correct him, I wish he died alone. Do you know that the whole of his children, the whole of his children is wife. And the, the, the young children are saying, we don't know what our father did. We don't know what our father touched. We don't know what has happened to our father. He didn't tell us. Now we are all a victim of his own personal mistake. And all those young children were burnt, I mean were stoned, and they were all, they, they died. It was only Korah, Korah, that entered into rebellion against the word of God and against Moses. But when judgment came, was the only Korah that died. Eh? Korah and the whole of his house, they were wiped out. You don't understand why the enemy pursues a man. He knows that for one man that he has caught and confused, he has caught a whole line. We're going to take this two more minutes of prayer. Whosoever you are in our midst tonight, the Holy Spirit is saying, where I placed you, is that where you are standing? As the priest of your family, as the head of your family, as the one who ought to lift up holy hands so that blessing can come to you and to your lineage, is that where you are standing? Even if you seem not to love your lives, will you jeopardize all those that were supposed to come under your hand? I want us to pray these two more minutes and then I'll close. Is there anything that you need to bring to the Savior tonight and say, look at me, Lord. Look at me, Lord. There are things that have happened that you have never told them at home. Your wife just don't understand. You just said, no problem, no problem. You did your hand like that. But when the problem began to come, when issues began to leak into the family, they have been going from one prayer meeting to another, not knowing that the matter came from you. Are you going to say to God tonight, restore me, restore me to where I belong. Change my story tonight. Correct my situation. The secret sin, the secret failure, the secret working of Satan. Lord Jesus, deal with it tonight. That I may become a blessing. I want to become a blessing. Not just for myself. How much a blessing to those that you have ordained to come under my hand. Thank you.
if you need to make a decision tonight, can you walk out quietly and join us at the altar and say, Father, Father, I have come to a place where I can't go back, can't go back main, I can't go back short. You must make my life, you must change my story. You must do something deliberate with me. Emmanuel, please. Spirit of the living God, tonight we ask you to arise. We ask you to do something beyond what a man could imagine or think. We just have this one minute to conclude that pattern. Is the Spirit of God convicting you that tonight is the night to open up? Have you buried something? Have you buried something in your bedroom that your children don't know? Have you entered into a covenant secretly somewhere? an agreement somewhere and the spirit of God is reminding you tonight that you are a man you are a man you are a man in the name of Jesus Christ listen the reason why it has to be uprooted tonight I said if it only is limited to you, it would have been simple. It was only David, listen, it was David alone that slept with Uriah's wife. It was only David that went and slept with Uriah's wife. But when God came to speak, he said, look, as you have done this now, bloodshed over your wives. Look at his wives were molested under the, he, 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 in front of everybody because of a secret sin he committed years ago. His own daughter was defied because of a seed that he sowed. Several things happened in that man's family simply because of a misbehavior that he did not handle. He tried to cover it. I must give you this last chance tonight. Is there something you have covered as a man? I said if it is your wife that misbehaved, it's contained, it's absorbable. But for a man, the repercussion of his secret failure it's a ripple effect. Is there anybody again tonight whom the Spirit of God is saying, don't cover it. Take it to the altar tonight and say, Lord, cleanse me. Correct my life. Where are you? Can you do that? God bless you, sir. God bless you, my brother. Just come down quietly and join us at the altar and say, God, let this meeting mark my Tony. Let this meeting become a turnaround. I want to reconnect with you. Lord, have mercy on me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Will you lift up that hand to God? Lift up your right hand to God as we are praying together tonight and say, God, just as I am without one play. 
I wouldn't want to, to be the reason for the jeopardy of my yet unborn children. Lord have mercy on me. When a man begins to misbehave, his wives are in danger, his children are in danger, posterity is in danger. Please lift up that hand and pray. Let's pray. Lord, have your way with us tonight. Bring cleansing, bring deliverance, bring forgiveness. Please open your heart to God as we are praying. Brother Emmanuel will come now and help us to pray. And as you lift up your hand to God, is there someone else who is being drawn by the Holy Spirit and say, Tonight, this is the meeting we have just started, but God has already come. The Spirit of God is already walking somewhere and said, You can't go like that. Thank you, Lord, tonight. Thank you. Please lift up that hand to God in prayer. And please begin to say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Here am I. Being a man is a matter. You must have mercy with me. You must have mercy with me. You must correct my story. You must restore my life. I need you to re to restore my life. You must cleanse my story. Don't let my lineage be jeopardized.